Splatoon 3 is coming out next year, and it looks like it's going to be a fantastic game. But today, I want to go over my five big concerns that I have for the series. Things that I think Nintendo really needs to stay away from, and I was sure to pick things that I think would be serious problems to the game, not just minor inconveniences. So, I'm going to go over them, and if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe so you can catch more Splatoon 3 content as we get closer to the game's release. Let's get started. First up is my biggest and smallest concern, movement and substrafing. Movement is basically everything to a Splatoon game. That's part of what makes this series so special is how quickly and fluidly you can move across the map. And with the squid roll and surge that we've seen, it looks like they're expanding on those movement options, which is exactly what we need. However, one big pitfall that I think that we might fall into is removing or changing the current movement that we have so far. The biggest concern I've seen is replacing substrafing with a squid roll. Now, for those who don't know, substrafing is a really easy way to change your direction pretty much instantly just by holding the sub open button when you change your direction. It's integral to the game at a competitive level, and it's incredibly easy to learn. So while it's not something that everyone does, hence why this is the least important change, it would really hurt how the game would feel if it was removed. But in general, I really think that Splatoon's movement is probably the best part about this game, and it's what makes this series so special to a lot of people. So hopefully Splatoon 3 only enhances the movement, rather than potentially changing it and likely making it a lot worse. Next up, copy-paste single player. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest about this. The base Splatoon 2 single player is incredibly forgettable. It's basically just slightly worse designed single player than we got in Splatoon 1, with a legitimately pretty much entirely repeated story. It is the most obviously rushed thing that we've ever seen, and it really can't be like that again. Hero mode is something that got incredibly stale and just doesn't really work that well. Octo Expansion, on the other hand, is one of the best single player experiences in any game ever, and I truly mean that. I really should review this sometime. Regardless, the main thing that Octo Expansion did well is being its own thing. The atmosphere, weapons you get, and progression and story are entirely distinct from anything we've gotten Splatoon series-wise, and that's exactly what we need in Splatoon 3, a story and level design that really feels unique and special, that can tell a brand new story, not a rehashed one we've already heard before. And while I know Splatoon is primarily a multiplayer game, I still think the single player is really important, and having a great one like Octo Expansion just enhances the game so much, so I really have high hopes for Splatoon 3 to hopefully have a better single player. Up third is no defense and damage up, and I can't believe I have to make this its own section or even talk about it. When Splatoon 1 ended, damage and defense were removed. It was pretty clear that the devs learned that having gear abilities that only counter each other and can increase or decrease shots to kill is way too drastic. And yet, when main power-up came out, what would otherwise be an amazing addition to the game was completely ruined by essentially being damage up 2.0. Touching enemy ink can penalize you, that's fine, but making it one less shots to kill is way too drastic, and it takes away a lot of the amazing movement the game has when you have to be careful not to touch a pixel of enemy ink. So, I'm only gonna say this once, don't press the damage up button. J just don't do it. Leave it behind. For real this time. Number four is matchmaking, and where do I begin with this section? Turf War isn't even the worst offender, the mode where a 99 star player can run into a baby Splatoon level 16 player. That's not the worst part. Nah, the worst part is League. Like, not only does it match X ranks and B ranks together, but you can't play League if you're not B in a certain mode? Like, I get B rank is not the hardest thing to get, but why are we gatekeeping playing with friends to a certain rank level? Like, I'm sure any game having the lowest rank unable to play with friends is a terrible idea, and it's something that never gets brought up, and I don't know why. Seriously, this is the worst restriction Splatoon has ever had. Why does this exist? Solo queue has plenty of matchmaking problems, but I mean, you can just look at rank X. You can play a game and get one or literally zero points. Why are there matches being made where the teams are so uneven that the game can never give you points? The whole point of a matchmaking system is to make the teams as even as possible. If you can't give a team points for winning, you have literally failed at your primary job. I get Nintendo cares about getting people into lobbies fast. I'm not trying to say we should have Overwatch DPS queues. We shouldn't. But the matches need to be way more even than they are now, and this goes for Solo, for League, and for Turf War. Put a little bit more effort to trying to make the teams even, and it'll result in a lot better experiences for everyone involved. 
Finally is rotations, and I'll be the first to admit rotations aren't as bad as people think, but this is seriously an outdated system that needs to go. And the default ranked league turf rotations aren't even the worst part. Yeah, those are bad, because if you want to play on a specific map or play on a specific mode and it's not on, oh well, too bad for you. By the way, not everyone can play Splatoon all the time, so they can't just wait for the right rotation. I can't believe I have to say this, but I do. The worst offender is Salmon Run, because for whatever reason, not only are the maps and stage randomized, but sometimes you just literally cannot play. <laughs> Like, again, I cannot think of the business decision that came from not letting people play your most standout multiplayer mode that you've added in the game. I can't comprehend it. I don't understand why this was a choice that ever happened. Please let people play the video game, Nintendo. They paid money for it. Anyway, I do want to give two honorable mentions to special spam and special design in general and map design. These two things are also very important, but also a lot harder to talk about in a quick list like this. I've done their own video for maps and a few videos for specials. You can find them all in the description. But that's my list. So I hope you enjoyed and let me know what your major concerns for Splatoon 3 are down in the comments below. And I will see you all in a future video.